All right, today we're going to be looking at Minute Physics, where it explains complex things using silly little doodles. Specifically, we're going to be looking at what atoms really look like. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Foles. I'm a nuclear engineer, a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Atomic orbitals have long been a source of frustration for me. On the one <laughs> hand, you have simple cartoon diagrams that make them feel friendly, but which are so varied and vague they don't really convey much beyond the basic idea that atoms have a nucleus and some electrons. Some people try to take the cartoony diagrams and make them feel more random or quantum, which is an improvement, but they're still very much just cartoon stand-ins for the vague idea of atom. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on nuclear symbols and the atomic symbol, please check out my video. I'll pin a video where I uh, talked about symbols along with some of Sam O'Nella's stuff down below. On the other hand, you have atomic orbitals depicted as fuzzy clouds or balloons or rainbow donuts. Oh man, I, I remember these from chemistry back in high school and they never made any sense to me at all. <laughs> I remember, I think just for the test, I would just wrote, memorize this stuff just so I can regurgitate it. I didn't really get anything out of this. It's just kind of sad because there's probably a better way to explain it. Which are definitely more technically accurate or technically inspired, but none of which feel like they give me a sense of what's actually going on. Like, what does this blobby thing have to do with orbiting electrons? Is the electron inside it or on the surface? Why do some of them have blobs and others donuts? It has to do with, so it has to do with probability, but it doesn't do a good job explaining it. Like, if you were to take a look at this, it's like, okay, what's the probability of the red stuff versus the blue stuff? It's not a model I like. I, I agree with this guy. It, it's in definite need of improvement. Why are some of the donuts rainbow colored? I want Don't to know. know what an atom looks like, and I want that picture <laughs> to actually have something to do with the nitty gritty reality of atoms, since they are indeed real things. You know, like how a diagram of the solar system is both a totally not-to-scale caricature, and yet also represents the very real idea that the planets all orbit the sun in roughly the same plane, and that some are farther out and some are closer in, and if it's animated we get to see that the closer planets complete their orbits more often? It's a nice picture, and that's what I want for atoms. It is, and I know, so he showed the earlier models where it actually showed them on orbital planes, that's not the case, but that was some attempt at doing the analog with the solar system, which I think led to a few misconceptions, but it was at least a, uh, a noble attempt to try to make something more relatable than those blobby things. <laughs> Good picture. There are a few things I'd like that picture to get across, some of them because they're important for the physics of atoms, and some of them because they're questions my brain wants answers to. Like, where is the electron? How fast is it going? How much energy does it have? How big is this picture relative to other pictures? Of course, the wave-particle nature of quantum mechanics means some of these ideas, like the electron's position, don't translate exactly from our everyday intuition to the atomic scale. But True, but you could at least do a better job than what was previously done. There is a way of thinking about wave-particle duality where you picture the wave function as a bunch of water, and the particle as a speck of dust in that water. The particle is mostly guided by where the water goes, and the water is guided by the equations that determine how water behaves depending on its circumstances. And if you apply the mathematics sure. of that idea to atomic orbitals, and then render it in three dimensions, here's what you get. That is gorgeous. I love it. Uh, it's just showing a probability function, uh, Monte Carlo type sim simulation of where the electrons can be and how they're concentrated in these little, man, that is, that is so much better than the other one. But it can show you, for one, unlike the holes, it, it can even shows you a little bit of specs that, hey, it can actually exist in those holes, but it's probably not there. And it's really all a big function of probability which is something you see when you deal with things that are even sm smaller like an atom. And it, it gets even more of a thing when you look down at nuclear stuff, other things going on in the actual nucleus as opposed to the electron's position in an atom. It becomes even more of a thing, even more of a Monte Carlo simulation when you, say, calculate the probability of something um, absorbing a neutron, absorbing a neutron and fissioning, or even alpha decay versus beta decay. Uh, there's, it's all 
a massive game of probability, and this is a great way to illustrate that. Isn't it beautiful? Here's another. <laughs> oh, wow. Love the grain. And another. And another. Man, I remember having to memorize all these numbers, but it was one of those things that hasn't really come up since uh, high school chemistry, actually, which is kind of which is kind of funny. Uh, you probably wouldn't think that being being a nuclear engineer, but the N, the L, and and the M up there have to do with the size, shape, and spin. If I remember correctly, don't ask me what the three is, the three and the two means. In fact, I made a bunch of these, and they're all mesmerizing and <laughs> it's just beautiful. so good. And isn't the ground state of the hydrogen atom just so cute? And aren't the excited states so majestic? There's just the way it's animated and how it shows the speed and and the size of like relative to and how how they can be all clumped together in one spot but be spread out in another spot. That's that's so much better and easier to understand. Wish we had this when I was in high school. Maybe, uh, maybe more people would have been interested in chemistry or engineering or science or something. So much structure and detail in them. I just love it. You can see <laughs> patterns in the orbitals. You can make art. You can get a sense that they actually are orbitals. I mean, something is orbiting. Okay, so I do have to be clear. The dots don't each represent a separate electron. The whole collection represents the wave function of a single electron, yeah. and the individual dots represent all the places that electron could be. A higher density of dots means a higher probability of the electron being there. The bigger orbitals are the ones with higher energies, because electrons with more energy are more likely to be far away from the nucleus. I do like that he's showing like a sense of scale as they get closer together versus the ones with the ones with the higher energy state, them moving them moving faster. I, I like that. Motion of the dots is showing the flow of the wave function, and does correspond to an extent with its actual angular momentum, though they're not electron trajectories. Unless you think okay, so L, so L is the angular momentum. Okay. In trajectories are real, in which case they really are electron trajectories. I'll let the philosophers of physics fight that one out. <laughs> but the point is, these visuals are created by representing actual electron wave functions in a visual language that our brains can understand, that of objects and light and shadows and motion in 3D space. There's actually stuff orbiting, and they're pretty. I hope you like them as much as I do. Oh, one final thing. I 100% get that these are not easy to draw. So if you want a cartoon representation of an atom that's simple but more closely based in atomic physics, here's my proposal. It's based on the orbitals from the p-block of the periodic table. One of them has the electron orbiting one way, one in the opposite way, and in the third one the electron is orbiting the same amount, but around some perpendicular direction, and we can't know which. Which is why the dots aren't moving in the middle orbital, and why I've drawn a dotted line and question mark for the sideways circle. I like that. It's a good way to illustrate the uh, the the M part, the uh, the direction. And if you want, you can add an electron to each orbital, or two electrons, one oriented spin up and one spin down. This is a minute physics approved cartoon representation of an. <laughs> Again, it makes so much more sense than the way I was taught. But really, the beautiful 3D ones are where my heart is. That's fascinating. Let, let me know if you had this a similar uh, struggle with the uh, old um, weird blobby donut sort of thing for illustrating the orbitals, and if that was only served to confuse you more, because <laughs> that's what it did for me. But <laughs> maybe if I would have learned this better, I would still I would still remember that stuff from uh, from all those years ago. But who knows? Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.